Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, I want to draw your attention to something that's hidden in plain sight that will have global implications over the next several years. There's an inexorable truth that's difficult to escape. For every unit of economic output, there's an equivalent unit of energy consumed somewhere in the world. And we're in the middle of an economic recovery in many places on Earth. Energy pricing is generally considered to be fairly inelastic with demand. That's to say, if a price of oil increases by 10%, there's zero change in consumption. If the price of oil doubles, there's next to zero change in consumption. You see, if a chocolate bar doubles in price, you might make a decision to skip a chocolate bar today. That would be an example of something where demand is elastic with respect to price. But if the cost of energy goes up to manufacture fertilizer, well, fertilizer demand is not going to drop. If you have a 10-mile drive to work and gas is 20% more expensive this week, you're still going to drive to work. Well, on Friday, the American Petroleum Institute published their latest quarterly outlook. It contains a number of sobering data points. And on today's show, I'm going to outline what I believe are a subset of the global implications for the current market circumstance. U.S. oil production is falling at a time when demand is increasing. According to the EIA, U.S. oil production is expected to fall by about 290,000 barrels a day this year. Current global consumption has returned to pre-pandemic levels, even though the economic recovery has not fully taken hold. Global economic demand in 2021 is expected to increase by about 5.4 million barrels per day and by 3.7 million barrels per day in 2022. Let me put this in perspective. This increase in demand this year in 2021 is the equivalent of adding the entire countries of France, Italy, and Germany's oil consumption to the global demand. We now have prices of oil above $73 a barrel consistently. So that's the demand side of the equation. There's a problem, and the problem is there's a lag between the investment in new production and that production actually coming online. Investment in new production has been declining for some time, and several companies have taken massive write-downs on their investments over the last couple of years. Those investments look like they were bringing excess supply into the market in particular in the realm of natural gas. Shell took a major write-down of its investment in Australia. But today, global natural gas prices are very high, and shortages are anticipated in some areas. It takes time to bring production to market. Some companies laid off tens of thousands of workers in 2020, and many have moved on into other industries. Hiring those folks back is going to be difficult. Some companies have lost the capability to take on certain kinds of projects, they were completely destroyed in the process. So now you might be wondering why I'm talking about energy and what this has to do with real estate. This is, after all, a real estate podcast. We can expect oil prices to remain high for several years as the economic recovery takes hold, and it takes time for new oil production to have an impact or for alternatives to reduce demand for oil. turns out that the value of the Canadian dollar is strongly tied to the price of oil. Whenever oil prices rise, so too does the value of the Canadian dollar. Well, I've had numerous Canadian investors asking me about moving Canadian dollars into investments of U.S. real estate. While I'm a fan of investing in U.S. real estate and all the values that come with investing in the U.S., I'm not recommending that Canadians convert dollars from Canada to U.S. dollars at this time. Maybe in three to five years that'll change, but for now, I'm not recommending it. There's too much foreign exchange risk to make the investment a good bet. You could make 30% return on your U.S. real estate investment and then have a 20% decline in the value of the U.S. dollar at the same time. In fact, from June 2020 until the middle of June this year, the U.S. dollar has fallen by 17% against the Canadian dollar. So that's a good example of the type of foreign exchange risk we could be facing. And if the price of oil exceeds $100 per barrel, and there's a lot of indications that it might, I predict the Canadian dollar will strengthen by at least another $0.10. And the notion of the Canadian dollar and the U.S. dollar at par is not that far-fetched. But let's look at the flip side question. Would it be a good time for Americans to invest in Canadian real estate? And I think the answer is yes. I say yes because the demand for housing in Canada is acute. Population is growing largely through immigration. So I'm seeing market conditions that support the creation of new supply in the market. In my home city of Ottawa, Canada, there's continued population growth and continued upward pressure on rent and prices. Assuming you're investing in a project that has strong fundamentals, when you layer the rate of return associated with a strong project, with the currency for an exchange gain potential, you've got a real shot at some outsized returns. 
as you think about that. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.